I seek refuge in God from Satan the Accursed in the name of God the Beneficent and the Merciful. I offer my congratulations on the birth of the Master of the Messengers, the best of the whole creation, and also on the birth of Abi Abdullah Ja'far ibn Muhammad al Sadiq. Peace and blessings be upon the Holy Prophet, his progeny, and Imam Sadiq. I offer my congratulations to the high position of infallibility and emanate Imam Mahdi, may God hasten his advent and peace be upon him. Also, I send my congratulations to all believers in all parts of the world and to all the oppressed nations. who have many problems due to being away from the Prophet's virtues. I send my congratulations to everyone. I hope that God Almighty hastens the advent of that person who will like his grandfather, the Prophet of Islam, and his father, Imam Ali, will revive the virtues and the virtuous ethics once again. It is not the day of the prophetic mission. It is the birth anniversary. Anyways, the birth is a precondition for the prophetic mission. I read you this noble hadith from the Prophet of Islam. The Prophet said, Verily, I was chosen to perfect the virtuous ethics. This hadith is just made of a few words, but these few words have deep meanings. It is a world of values and goodness. It represents a history of ethical methods. The word verily is a metaphorical exclusion in the Sadith. As you know, the Prophet is very precise in every respect, including speaking. He used this exclusion here not for fasting, prayers, Hajj, or other places. The purpose behind the Prophet's mission is, however, excluded metaphorically. To perfect the virtuous morals and ethics, God sent all messengers for the virtuous ethics. But 
However, their mission wasn't completed. God perfected the virtuous ethics by sending the Holy Prophet of Islam. Some translations make of virtuous ethics as all goodness. If that was true, maybe it could be said Mahasan, not Makarim. In Arabic, there is a big difference between the two words. The hadith doesn't say Mahasan al akhlaq but it says Makarim al akhlaq The word that can convey the meaning of Makarim al akhlaq could be the word virtues. Akhlaq is behaviors, which can be good or bad. We have good behaviors and bad behaviors. But here, it is question of good or virtuous behaviors. God has respected mankind, but for what? To eat? Well, animals eat too. To reproduce? Animals do that too. To live? Well, trees live too. So virtues are above mere goodness and beauty. The Prophet said, I was sent to perfect the virtuous ethics. It requires many discussions to only approach the idea of virtuous ethics. But I just tell you what the Prophet did practically and verbally, which is based on what we have received and concluded from the Prophet. What is the virtuous ethics? There are many traditions in this regard. People and the experts can find these traditions anywhere they are. These traditions indicate that if the Islam which was introduced by the Prophet of Islam, whether when he read the Holy Quran or through his statements and hadith, take whatever the Messenger gives you, this is what Quran says, and also the actions and methods of the Holy Prophet. If this version of Islam was implemented, whatever rewards good people could have in paradise, it all would be available in this world. This world would be a paradise where all physical, mental, and spiritual needs of human beings were fulfilled suitably. However, it did not happen. 
خود ما برداشت کنیم از همین فرمایشایی که بهمون به رسیده We can conclude from the hadith that are available, including the orders and commands by the Holy Quran, the noble hadith of the Holy Prophet of Islam, the hadith of the Holy Ahlul Bayt, their words, actions, and permissions. We should learn about these things. The perfection of virtuous ethics was the mission of all messengers who each contributed to his perfection to some extent. But what did it but what did make it perfect at the end? In the book of Kafi, it is narrated from Imam Son of Peace be upon him who said, We need to let the world know of this thing that I, I, that I am about to say. The Muslims the Muslims need to know it first. The majority of them don't know it. The dear young Muslims need to know this and then they should convey it to others. It is not just an order by the God's messenger. The Prophet himself carried out this order Imam Sadiq, peace be upon him, said, One day, the Prophet made three statements. The Prophet's statements were a law, the real laws. Not the laws of countries that is passed by a couple of uneducated people, and then they change it time after time. Governments come and change hundreds of their laws and their, this continues. It wasn't like this. The Prophet's words were the real and divine laws. It was the law of virtuous ethics. The Prophet made three statements. The Prophet said, one who dies, his wealth entirely belongs to inheritors. One who dies, if he lives behind a debt or a family, it is all on me, the Prophet. This tradition has many reliable sources and all Muslims agree on this. This was the Prophet's statement. Imagine three people pass away. One of them is wealthy and has a family. The family is not poor and the inheritance can support this family. The Prophet said he would not tax inheritance. He was the head of the government. But this taxation is conducted in the world today, even in Islamic countries. This taxation was done in the pre-Islamic era. The Prophet said he would not charge taxes on inheritance. Now imagine another person passes away, but this person has a family and leaves no inheritance to support this family. It is about a poor family that needs to be supported. The Prophet said, they should come to me. 
I am responsible for them. Now imagine a third person who was in debt. If this person doesn't have properties to pay off his debts, the Prophet said, the creditors should not go to the family of the deceased for their money, even if the family is wealthy and well off. Instead, they should go to the Prophet. Imam Sadr says, after the Holy Prophet made these three statements, it caused the majority of Jews to become Muslims. This is what an infallible Imam says. This is the value of virtuous conducts and behaviors. Today, in any part of the world, in any city, village or country, if the, if the person in power declares that if someone dies there, he won't tax the inheritance, none at all. If the person leaves a family that needs to be supported, he will be supporting the needy family. If the person <coughs> if the person died while he was in debt and he did not have properties to pay them off, the person in power would pay all the debts. With these short statements of the Holy Prophet of Islam, so many problems will be gone. People give loans confidently because people like to do good things, but they don't want to get in trouble afterwards. People think, what should they do if the debtors could not pay off their loans? The Prophet solved this. The Prophet said, come to me as I am responsible for it. The Prophet didn't tax any inheritance in his time. Just consider this sentence. The perfection of virtuous ethics It is not just about good morals, it is the virtuous ethics. There are no countries who practice this method, unfortunately. No Islamic country practices this method. The Jews converted to Islam, as Imam Sadiq said. It wasn't a small group of Jews. Imam Sadiq says, this was the reason of the majority of Jews to convert to Islam. Only after the Prophet made these short statements. This is so precious. It brings humanity together. It reunites them. Now imagine that there is some wealthy person 
who tells his sons, his friends, his people around him that if any one of them could not pay off his debts, he will pay them. This family will not have any financial concerns anymore. They will improve on humanitarian fields. Everyone can take loans if necessary. They can take loans to buy a house because everyone gives loans. If the debtor could not pay off or if he dies, this wealthy person pays it. This is the virtuous ethics. Virtuous ethics is not treating people nicely. This is called the good morals. Here's another story which only took 15 minutes of the Prophet's time maybe. This tradition is directly from the Prophet and, is, and it is narrated by and is narrated by all Muslims. There is a person called Abdullah bin Ubay. I recommend the dear youth to read about this person in history. This person had the worst behavior with the Holy Prophet of Islam. He was the chief of hypocrites. He was the meanest person to the Holy Prophet. During the lifetime of the Holy Prophet, this person said these things. I wouldn't have said it if the Quran had not mentioned it. This person called the Prophet the meanest person. The Prophet was informed right away. This person worked for years against the Prophet in Medina. In the middle of a war, thousands of enemies from Mecca had come to Medina. The Prophet had invited Muslims to defend against the attackers. Muslims left Medina. The hypocrites were also there. On the way, this person started insulting the Holy Prophet of Islam and returned with a group of people right before the war. In today's world, this is the penalty for such treason. We are responsible to convey the virtuous ethics to the world. The young Muslims must learn this and perform this responsibility. There is a verse in Holy Quran about Abdullah bin Ubay. He died. This person's son was a faithful Muslim, apparently. The Prophet told him, let us know when your father dies. The son went to the Prophet one day before the death of his father. He said, if you want my father, the chief of hypocrites, dead, I will do it myself. The Prophet said no. When the Prophet was informed that Abdullah bin Ubay has died. The Holy Prophet took out his robe to use it as a shroud for the dead. The 
پیغمبر خدا صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ عرض کردن یا رسول الله پی دهنتون واسه این میدید People were surprised why the Prophet used his shirt to shroud that person. The traditions are available in tafsir of this verse and don't pray over the body of any one of them. The Prophet said that he hoped that some hypocrites would be guided by this behavior. There are traditions in Bihar and other places that behavior of the Holy Prophet he used his shirt to shroud that person. Though the person had made troubles for tens of years, One thousand hypocrites were guided. Hypocrites were Muslims. They practiced Islam like others. They acted like Muslims but were infidels. One thousand changed their course. We can't find a similar example in history. We can't even slightly criticize the head of governments. We saw this in Iraq. The population of Medina wasn't that much at then. There was a tradition from Imam Sadiq that says it was 10,000 people. Let's say 2,000 of them were hypocrites. 1,000 hypocrites, hypocrisy. Hypocrisy should be cured and remedied. Hypocrisy must be treated with virtuous ethics. Hypocrites are human beings too. They have hearts. That's why they were guided. The Prophet used his shirt to shroud the chief of the hypocrites. This behavior shook the conscience of these people. This is the virtuous ethics. I remember the time of Iraq changing to a republic. The dear youth can read the papers of the time, 1378 AH, and the years before it until 1370 AH. There was some of Islam remaining at that time. Now it's nothing at all. There is a narration from the Holy Prophet. Nothing will remain from Islam but its name. Fasting, prayers, and Hajj are important practices. No doubt about it. But Islam is not just about these practices. Yazid used to go on Hajj fasted and did prayers. Ma'amun and Harun also did these things. So what is the virtuous ethics? I was indeed chosen to perfect the virtuous ethics, the Prophet said. I remember that in Iraq at that time, People who lived in Iraq 60 years ago, they might have heard this. At that time, everyone could have weapons in Iraq.
people freely bought guns like other necessary things. I myself remember a shop that sold and repaired guns and weapons. I can remember the name of the shopper and he died 20 years ago in Holy Kong. He had a shop in the Bain al Haramain in Karbala and sold guns and firearms. His name was Sayyid Ibrahim. People everywhere had guns. But how many casualties did Iraq have? Was there a chaos? No. Fifteen years of my life in Iraq, only one person was hanged for murder. Only one person. I remember his name, but I would not say it. After Iraq became a republic, people were disarmed. The government took all the guns and they did whatever they liked. They killed thousands and thousands. People were tortured. And you all know about the crimes of Saddam. Everyone had guns. And every young person had guns. But in more than 10 years, only one person was executed. But today, in the Islamic country, the murders are as low as then. This is the virtuous ethics. This was the last of those times. The head of Iraq's government of that time, I don't mention names, he did something that some people opposed. People had made a poem to criticize him. Papers printed the poem, kids in the alleyways sang it. It was about the head of Iraq's government. At that time, there were no TVs. Pictures were really rare. People did not recognize the head of government. Kids were playing somewhere and they sang this poem to criticize the head of government. The Iraqi president was also passing by there with his entourage. Someone said to the kids, he's the president of Iraq. All kids just fell silent. The president joined the kids and asked them to continue singing. It all originates from the Prophet's virtuous ethics, which is, to a small extent, displayed here. Did the president like it when the kids made fun of him? No, but he could not do anything about it. The president then gave kids some money to buy themselves some snacks. This is the prophet's virtuous ethics that is displayed here to some extent. There are two big responsibilities today. People don't know about these things. The Prophet of Islam belongs to all humanity. O oh people, I am the God's messenger for all of you. These ethics should be introduced to the world. People can choose to accept or not. Many will surely accept it. By his morals, the Prophet made these people embrace Islam in groups. 
ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا It is our responsibility to convey this to the world. It is a collective duty which needs everyone to engage in it. While there are other duties as well, one cannot handle all of them at once, but everyone is duty-bound, especially at this time of technological advancements, at the presence of books and satellite TVs and journals, Believers have access to these things in Islamic and non-Islamic countries. The second responsibility is to dissociate from what was known as Islam after the Prophet's martyrdom. And it is still in place in many countries at our time. Iraq under Saddam was an Islamic country, but it, not, but it did not display Islam. The world must know that it is not the real Islam. It is not in line with the virtuous ethics. The Prophet said, nothing but the name of Islam will remain. The word bread is not bread. It doesn't feed you. The word water doesn't make your thirst go away. The word Islam is not Islam either. These two things should be made known to the world so that people can choose with open eyes. People should choose right or wrong with open eyes. But today it is not happening at this time. It is not happening in Islamic countries, let alone non-Muslim countries. I hope that by the grace of the Prophet of Islam and Imam Sadiq and our Master Imam al-Mahdi, may God hasten his advent, God shows his special attentions to us and save all humanity from the problems that are spreading to all parts of the world, all men and women, the youth and elderly, especially in the Islamic countries. So that it would prepare the ground for the reappearance of the Holy Imam al-Mahdi, the promised savior. May God bless Muhammad and his pure household.